The truth is, we just need to stay here. And uh, in terms of being the change we want to see in the world, I want to invite Conrad Schmidt, who uh, is a Vancouverite now. He's originally from South Africa. Um, besides riding on naked, nakedly on bicycles, <laughs> uh, which he does for fun, I think. He founded a party here in British Columbia called the Work Less Party. And uh, his personal story is what inspired the creation of this party. And I asked Conrad to share his story. So please welcome Conrad Schmidt. to talk a little bit about is the history of May Day. May Day commemorates the Haymarket Riot or Massacre. In 1886, in 1886, a group of protesters, no, not, not protest workers, went on strike and they were striking for an eight hour day. Why was it so important to them? It was important because of family, community, becoming involved in more than just making stuff. And they knew that. Today, the struggle for a reduced work week is more important than ever before. Why? Because it's no longer just about social justice. It's about ecological sustainability as well. The single most important thing we can do to reduce our ecological footprint is work less, consume less, produce less, and live more. Today, many of us head off to offices and factories and marketing divisions and sale divisions, and we make all this consumer junk that just lands up in a landfill. 90% of all the junk that we make lands up in a landfill just six weeks after it's been made. We have become a world of landfill fillers. We're no longer doing the important work of family, community, music, art, finding out what our politicians are doing, holding them accountable, finding what the corporations are doing, holding them accountable. A question that a lot of people often ask me and they say, Conrad, if we work less, does that mean that we're going to make less money? And I used to think that the answer was yes, but I was wrong. I was wrong. There was, if you do a correlation between the countries that have a reduced work week, and there are many countries that have a reduced work week, to the ones that don't, the countries with a reduced work week are more egalitarian. They have less of a gap between the rich and the poor. The rich are not as wealthy, but the poor, they, there's more, they have more wealth. They, there's less of a poor. Whereas in the countries where people are all working, chasing that dollar, work long hours, no time to find out what's going on, no time to find out what the corporations are doing, and just voting whoever spends the most on advertising campaigns, that's where they're becoming poorer. The harder people have been working, the poorer they become. Because reducing work week is about creating social empowerment so that people can find out what their politicians are doing, what the corporations are doing, come to rallies and start holding them accountable and being active in communities. And that is why in the last 40 years, our standard of living bad, bad, bad. has becoming worse. We've all been becoming poorer at the same time as the work week has been increasing. Yes. If we want to be serious about ecological and social justice, the reduced work week has to become a game core to what this movement is about. If we want to be serious about ecological and social justice, right. workers of the world, relax. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much and thank you for organizing this.
Okay, I didn't hear the story I was expecting, but that was fun. Thanks, Conrad. <laughs> Let's give him a hand. Okay, so now that you're experienced occupiers, um, I would like us to address this issue of should we be working less so that we earn less, so that we buy less and consume less. Because even if we're working and making lots of money but consuming nothing, where does that extra money go? Into the bank, into the credit union, what do they do with it? They lend it out so that the economy can grow. So whether you're contributing to a growing economy by spending your own money directly or by lending it to someone else through a bank, money is lending itself to a growth economy. And it's this underlying assumption that our economy needs to grow and keep growing and grow at a faster rate and a faster rate that is destroying this planet. We do not have unlimited resources. We need to live within the ability of Mother Earth to sustain us. And it means we gotta pull back. 